after the discussion on authority, communication, and the criteria of efficiency, this week we'll focus on the fourth mechanism by which an organization influences administrative decisions, organizational loyalty, and organizational identification. Chapter 10 of Herbert Simon's book, Administrative Behavior, introduces how loyalties and organizational identifications shape organizational members' decision-making. Let's first define the terms. Organizational loyalty is defined as an attachment to the organization. This attachment is not contingent on external rewards or stimuli. Instead, it's an inherent alignment of an individual's decision-making processes with the organization's objectives. This organizational loyalty ensures decisions made by the individual are consistent with the organization's goals. This form of loyalty transcends mere compliance or agreement with organizational goals and policies. It embodies a deeper internalization of the organization's goals and values. Where does organizational loyalty come from? It comes from organizational identification, which is formed when we perceive our identity as intertwined with that of the organization. How does organizational identification influence administrative decisions? When faced with different options, we evaluate those options based on their potential impact on the group or organization to which we feel connected. This organizational identification can lead to decisions that, while not always the most efficient, strengthen the connection between you and your organization. For example, you may choose to work overtime without pay to help your organization meet a key deadline, prioritizing the organization's immediate needs over your personal convenience or even financial compensation. Your decision, while potentially inefficient from a personal standpoint, reinforces your alignment with the organization's goals and values. The roots of organizational identification can be explained by the brain's mechanisms. The emotional ties that underpin organizational identification engage brain areas responsible for empathy, cooperation, altruism, and emotional processing, leading to a heightened sense of loyalty. As a result, decisions made by individuals are not only influenced by rational evaluation of organizational goals, but are also deeply colored by emotional attachments to the organization. This emotional attachment explains why we may sometimes make decisions that seem to contradict a personal gain or organizational efficiency. The detrimental consequence of strong organizational identification becomes especially pronounced in the decision-making processes of administrators and employees who may prioritize organizational goals over ethical considerations or broader social norms. One of the most concerning aspects of strong organizational identification is the potential encouragement of pro-organizational unethical behavior. This occurs when people, in their commitment to achieve organizational goals, engage in actions that are unethical or morally questionable. The driving force behind pro-organizational unethical behavior is the belief that the ends, that is, the organizational goals, justify the means, even if those means compromise ethical standards. For example, in high-pressure environments, employees who strongly identify with their organizations may resort to misleading customers about the benefits of a product or service to meet sales targets. Likewise, in schools, teachers strongly committed to achieving the school's goals about student test scores may illegally change students' test scores. Excessive organizational identification can also lead to a situation where employees suppress their own moral judgments and critical thinking in favor of conforming to the organization's values and objectives. Employees may find themselves complicit in behaviors that, under different circumstances, they would oppose. 
the rationalization for such a complicity often comes down to a perceived necessity to protect the organization's public image or to contribute to the organizational objectives, even when those actions conflict with legal or moral standards. A stark example is seen in the Catholic Church's scandal, where sexual abuse allegations were systematically concealed to safeguard the institution's reputation. In many cases, people in the church may have recognized the moral and legal imperative to confront the abuses. However, driven by a strong organizational identification with the church and its image, they might have rationalized their silence or active participation in the cover-ups. In prioritizing the church's public image, they place organizational loyalty above ethical responsibilities and legal obligations, leading to widespread harm and the betrayal of trust. Organizational identification can also create conflicts of loyalty, especially when we are part of multiple groups, each of which has its own distinct goals and objectives. This can lead to conflicts of loyalty, a situation where our allegiance to one group conflicts with our allegiance to another. For example, you are faced with a decision where advancing the organization's long-term strategy means missing short-term performance targets set by your team. Choosing to focus on the long-term strategy may benefit the organization as a whole, but could lead to conflict with team members who are focused on meeting immediate targets. Strengths and internal conflict arise from the challenge of reconciling the different objectives and loyalties. We may feel torn between our commitment to the larger organization and our loyalty to our immediate team and department. This tension can lead to stress as we struggle to make decisions that satisfy both sets of objectives and may feel guilt or anxiety over potentially neglecting one loyalty in favor of another. Moreover, the influence of organizational identification also changes across different levels of organizational hierarchy. At lower levels, organizational identification helps ensure that decisions are made in a way that is consistent with the organization's broader goals and values. It supports responsible and impersonal decision-making by following established policies and procedures and aligning their individual behavior with organizational objectives. Their frames of reference within which decisions are made are largely given. However, at the upper echelons of an organization's hierarchy, the influence of organizational identification can be more complex and potentially problematic. New organizational values and goals can be introduced. Decision makers' frames of reference within which decisions are made are not given. At the higher levels of an organization's hierarchy, Administrators may need to establish new policies and procedures to ensure that organizational members' efforts align with the organizational goals. It is at these higher levels that organizational identification may have their most serious consequences by introducing assumptions, biases, or values that have not been critically examined or validated against the current realities. Their strong identification with the organization's existing values and success formulas can blind them to emerging trends, alternative strategies, or innovative solutions. This strong organizational identification can act as a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it creates a strong loyalty to the organizational goals. On the other hand, it can also predispose leaders to favor familiar approaches over potentially more effective but unfamiliar ones. To address the detrimental consequences of excessive organizational identification, administrators must develop and implement decision-making processes that encourage diversity of thought and regularly revisit and revise organizational values and goals 
to reflect the changes in the external environment and the organization's strategic direction.